Dudes, what is happening? This is Trent, and uh, I wanted to do some simple tutorials. I asked people, what would you like to see me draw, and what would you like to learn how to draw? And uh, one of the more popular things that came up is a rose. And so it's a pretty simple thing to, to, to draw. Uh, it's really just about your understanding of the shapes and the forms. It doesn't matter if you're using Photoshop or Sketchbook Pro, or if you're using pencil and paper or markers. These same kind of principles are gonna apply. Now dudes, the first thing that you want to do is not get too intimidated. You don't want to compare your work to pros or anything like that. Just remember to have fun with it. That is so key. Uh, what we're going to do is when we start out, we just want to get the shapes. We want to get the forms down and we just want to focus on the line art. Don't, do not jump into painting right away unless if you already know what you're doing. Um, you got to run before you walk, baby. I mean, wait a minute. No, it's the other way. You got to walk before you run, baby. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so the first thing I did is uh, I, I did have a photo uh, that I was referencing and do not hesitate to use a photo, especially when you are studying or learning. Uh, pros use photos. Sometimes they just straight up use a photo in their painting. They don't even bother to just use it as reference. They use it in the painting. Uh, but I recommend if you're using this to study and you want to learn how to draw better, just you know have your photo up and uh, draw from it, learn from it, be inspired by it, understand what types of leaves you're drawing, and just the clustering of elements. Be careful to not let your lines connect. If those leaves were touching, that would be what's called a tangent. And the flow of the viewer's eye would intersect with another line and it creates a disruption to the flow. That's a tangent, you don't want that. What we wanna do in our sketch stage is we wanna kind of envision the roundness of each element, the depth of each element. We wanna imagine that that rose itself is, has volume, it's, it has a thickness and a weight. And we wanna make sure that our scale of, of elements connect uh, nicely so that we have a nice balance of large shapes, medium shapes, and small details clustering. We don't wanna have all small details clustering everywhere. The next thing we wanna consider is that Roses are made of a lot of petals, and uh, you're going to have a lot of these flowing elements that are uh, creating into lips. Each of these petals forms into a lip. It's going to be a very lip-heavy episode. Uh, what I've done, I'm drawing this in Photoshop, so I've jumped in and created a new layer, and I've set that layer's properties to multiply. You could do this, if you were working on paper, you could do this with uh, markers. You would probably want at least two shades of red and two shades of green for this particular drawing. The next stage is, of course, to fill in what is essentially called flats. And this is our mid-range of each of our colors. So our mid-range for our green is probably a little more saturated than it needs to be, but that's okay for the, the purposes of this video. I wanted something very bright and colorful. Uh, and it's called uh, flats because it's essentially it's exactly what it is. It's a flat uh, representation of a color. And we could say, hey, our rose is done, but it's not good enough yet. We wanna really add volume. We wanna add turning of form and shapes to things. So uh, I wanted to correct a few things. So I went in and uh, in Photoshop, there is a filter called Liquify. And the, in Liquify, it allows me to make subtle little adjustments here and there, just to make sure that it feels rounded and it feels like uh, symmetrical. Uh, so the next thing that I've done is uh, I'm using a big airbrush and I've created another layer that is set to multiply again. And uh, I'm using the same red and it's gonna literally multiply. It's gonna compound on top of my other red. And that's gonna create a little bit more shadow in, in certain areas. Uh, and that's gonna be what starts to give uh, volume and, and a, a sense of depth to my rows. Now I'm erasing out from that multiply layer. I erase out the things that are not, uh, uh, that I don't want. Uh, and it's not gonna affect the layers below it. Uh, here I am kind of creating a little bit of a highlight on the stem. Now I haven't quite found the exact green that I want yet. So uh, I'm, I'm gonna just continue to lay in my flats and those areas where the green is gonna overlap the red, I'm gonna start to, start to paint that sort of a thing in. You'll also notice that this is a good time to begin to, to begin the process of pushing and pulling. Uh, and what I mean by that is I'm adding shadows and I'm adding highlights. So I've always got these basic three tones for any solid object. My uh, highlight color, 
that is dependent on the light that, that is hitting the object. The mid-range color, which we've established, is our flat color. And the shadow color, which is dependent on what color of shadow, uh, what kind of fill light I have or bounced light I have. And I didn't go too crazy with bounced light in this one because it's really a rose against a white background. Pretty simple stuff. Um, but here you can see I've begun to, uh, I've shrunk my brush down and this is when I start to imply a little bit more detail and I start to kind of like push uh, more shadows in and I'm pulling out more highlights if you think of it that way. I tend to get a little bit more graphic with things and what I mean by that is I take complex shapes that I might find in my reference and I simplify it. I simplify those shapes down to uh, something so that you get an immediate read. It's never confusing or frustrating on the viewer's eye to figure out what am I looking at. Roses are essentially an assembly of lips, a lot of lips, and uh, essentially all these petals come out and they begin to blossom and fold over. And so that's what we'll see as our highlight. We get to see the inside of each of those petals a little bit. It's gonna be a very lip heavy episode today. If you are drawing along with me, you might note that I have my left finger over the Alt key on my keyboard. And uh, every now and then in the video, you'll see the eye drop uh, symbol pop up. That means that I'm color dabbing. I'm taking the color from uh, the image and however it's blending, whatever color is directly underneath the point of that eyedropper is going to become my active color that I can paint with. And this is a very key aspect to painting digitally. If you were doing this with markers, you don't have any kind of advantage like that, but you get to have yourself a physical something special. For a while, I was thinking it'd be really nice to just do uh, little drawings of things for people. But one thing that you gotta remember, and this is the most important part, is that if you're gonna draw a rose, you must draw it from the heart, you know? You must always infuse the passion. The passion is what makes the rose beautiful. Of course, everybody knows. If you try to attempt to draw a rose without a passion, you might as well be drawing with the poopy pants. It is worthless. It, it means nothing. It has no meaning. Forget it. Do not even try. But you draw from the heart. And you know, suddenly the rose, it is 25% more beautiful than ever before. And then you had something special. And the other person will feel that too. I think that's true with all paintings, all images that you create, anything that you create. The sense that you have on the inside, what you're feeling inside, it's transmogrified. It is made physical in the pixels. It is harnessed from the energy of the machine in front of you and infused into the image. And it's conveyed directly to the audience. The recipient senses what you were feeling when you created it. Or something like that. Oh boy, we got, we got real artsy. We got real... <laughs> real artsy there for a while. Ah, so how to draw a rose. <laughs> so one thing that I'm doing is um, uh, I'm, I'm just kind of cleaning things up. I'm, I'm like getting into the details now. You'll notice that my brush got a lot smaller. Now is a good time to start actually digging in with a, a, a bit of a smaller brush. Uh, I've started to kind of like do a little bit of hatching. I think some of that's like my old comic book background. I still like to do little hatchy lines now and then. I just make it feel like it's still kind of a sketch, you know? Uh, even though I'm working digitally, I always still try to capture the feeling of a uh, traditional media. Uh, you'll notice I'm, I'm also kind of going in and cleaning up some of my edges and giving this tiny little subtle um, little points to the, the leaves. I want them to feel like they've got those, uh, it's, it's not a razor, but it's like a razor like zigzag edge to them. And uh, I'm using the shadow, you'll notice on the leaf that you're watching right now, the shadow is, be is, since that leaf is behind the stem, the shadow is darker and the highlight on the stem sort of makes the, the stem pop out a lot more. And so that gives dimensionality. You can use that kind of level of contrast to push some elements back and pull some elements forward to get a really nice clean read on things. And that's something that really develops with time. Don't uh, like play around with it now while you can, uh, while you're just in play mode. Um, and eventually it becomes a sense. It becomes something that becomes intuitive to you. 
Uh, I'm just going in right now and filling in some of those leaf petals from uh, the, down the center of the, of the leaf. Each leaf kind of has its own identity, but for the most part, leaves are they're pretty much a, a standard kind of a shaping. You can see that what I'm doing is uh, creating a little bit more of that uh, that saw edge on the on the edge of each leaf. I've gotten a little stylized with it. I, I tend to add my own pepper in my own little flavor, my own signature type of stuff, like the little coilies at the end of the leaves. Now, a rose does not have these, and that's quite all right. I'm not really, there's no test. There's no judges for this one. There's nobody telling me, hey, you can't do that, man. That's not real. That's not like, that's not authentic and, and natural. <laughs> well, you know what? I don't care. I don't care. I'm making my own rose, man. You want to paint your rose the way you want to make it? Why don't you do that? Um, anyway, uh, here's a, here's an effect that I did. Uh, I, I like to use a color balance effect, and you can hit the uh, Control or Command B, as in boy, and uh, in Photoshop, and you can get yourself some uh, ability to adjust uh, the saturation and colors uh, or the the RGB values. Uh, for your mid-range, your shadows, and your highlight areas. This is a nifty, more advanced Photoshop, Photoshop trick. Um, if you're doing something on, on paper, I would suggest lean more towards, if you're going to do an image all in warm colors, choose warmer, uh, like be consistent with all of them. So uh, if you pick a brown, pick like a warmer brown, you know, um, and you can kind of do this little outline effect that adds a little bit of saturation. When you look at it from a distance, you'll get your, your eye sort of blends the colors a little bit more. And that's a difficult thing to explain. I'm sorry that this isn't more of a absolute beginner's guide to painting <laughs> roses. Um, I guess I got a little carried away with it and then found myself doing really advanced stuff because I'm comfortable with doing it. Um, but I hope that to some extent this still inspires you and, and uh, gives you some ideas on ways that you yourself can improve how you draw a rose, uh, whether it's digitally in Photoshop or on paper. Uh, one of the things I'm doing now is uh, I'm creating selections and then fattening up the body of the rose uh, and then going in and touching up where I've edited it. Uh, I'm adjusting some of the edges to uh, make sure that it clusters nicely and adding specular highlights to give more dimensionality to it. The specular highlights are going to really give it a sense that it's maybe even wet. Uh, it's the amount of reflective surface, uh, so it would be right where the light is hitting the object and then bouncing right back at the viewer's eye. So aside from a little bit of uh, color contrast adjustment, that pretty much wraps it up for my How to Draw a Rose video. Uh, I certainly would love to do more drawings uh, that you guys would like to see me do. So if you have suggestions uh, or ideas for things that I should draw for you, the audience, uh, who has been so gracious and awesome to me over the years, uh, please leave that suggestion in the, the comment section below. If you're not already a subscriber, I certainly love having you on board. Um, and uh, until next video, dudes, remember to create with passion. All right, that about does it for me. I'll catch you in the next video. All right, ciao.